This is a tutorial um, to demonstrate how to make a power generator for advanced bases that converts oil into natural gas and burns it. Um, the net power output is something around 50,000 watts continuous. Um, and it's, it's an advanced you know, strategy for advanced bases. So I, you're gonna need access to things like thermium and supercoolant in order to pull it off. Uh, I think I'm gonna start by doing a quick tour of what it looks like in my base um, uh, so that you can get the basic idea. And then I'll switch to, you know, I'll make a sandbox mode game so that you can, uh, so that we can go through, you know, I'll just build the whole thing with all of the little details in it. Uh, so you can see all the thinking that's involved and, you know, sort of what the purpose for all the little bits are. Um, what else? Yeah, my frame rate's going to look kind of bad because this is a really big base. Uh, all right, anyways, so this is basically what it looks like. Um, the magic that happens with this, the, the reason it's so efficient is because it uses uh, heat exchange, heat exchangers, which means, you know, like, uh, for example, I'll get into this in, t in a minute. Um, for example, this chamber, this room, uh, the oil goes in the top and it's, you know, cold. And as it goes down to the bottom, it heats up and it turns into sour gas. And the sour gas down here is really hot and, you know, it has nowhere else to go. So as it rises up, it, uh, the sour gas cools off, which of course means that it, it heats up the oil on its way down. So there's this whole exchange of heat from cold at the top the hot at the bottom and uh, uh, because you're using the heat exchanger you don't have to actually generate much heat uh, so like in this case I have two aqua tuners down here um, to generate heat and really I think you could get by with one if you were to make this a lot taller but that's let's not talk about that this one uses two uh, so I'll try to give you a quick tour here um, this is my base, so you'll see other plumbing in here, but it's not important. What's important is this pipe full of crude oil. Uh, that's what's feeding the generator with fuel. Um, the first chamber it goes into here is just, this is just water with a liquid tepidizer in it. Uh, liquid tepidizers are great for really inexpensive heating, um, but of course they're limited to, you know, 85 degrees. Um, still, you get that. I put it in there so that you know the oil I heat it up to 85 degrees before it goes into the um, the generator uh, because might as well take advantage of that cheap heat. Uh, so it goes through there. It warms up, um, and then it comes out right here at this vent, which you can't really see. It's underneath the oil, and it dribbles over these airflow tiles. Um, and they're designed kind of in a pyramid shape so that, you know, it dribbles over each side and then dribbles onto the next one and dribbles onto the next one. And the idea is it, it's sort of, sort of, um, well, dribbling <laughs> through the hot sour gas. So the hot, the sour gas is hot and it warms up the oil without me having to spend a bunch of power on, you know, aqua tuners or something in order to do that heating. Uh, so as it goes down, it turns into petroleum. And eventually, as it gets near the bottom, it turns into, it gets hot enough to turn into sour gas. So down here at the bottom, as you can see, it's uh, 567 degrees. Um, and the liquid tepidizers are running, keeping it nice and hot down there. And I think I already mentioned this, but now that it's sour gas and has nowhere else to go, uh, the sour gas rises up through this, warming up all of the liquids, which is what we want. Uh, back to the top where it can go through these airflow tiles over here into this column, this chamber. Um, and then it moves down through this chamber. And as it does that, well, now it's really hot. So we want to cool it off so that we can condense it into methane. Uh, my game is auto saving. It's stuck. Um, so it goes down this tower and you'll see I have a temp shift plate next to a metal tile. Uh, so that the heat in this sour gas can be transferred through to the natural gas on this side. Uh, and as it goes down the tower, as the sour gas goes down the tower, there's a lot of these little heat exchange things, and so it cools off. It's at 179 here, and down here it's at 
33, and down here near the bottom, it's at negative 68. Um, so you can see it cools down as it moves down to the tower uh, by giving off heat to the cold natural gas that's on this side of this little wall. Um, at the bottom, this is where it condenses into methane, which is this or orange liquid here, in case you, you don't know. Uh, the re it does that because it's very cold down here. Let me just show you where that coldness comes from, in case it's not obvious. My, my liquid aqua tuners heating up the sour gas up here are also cooling down the super coolant that's in this insulated pipe. And that super coolant cools uh, these metal tiles and the super coolant below them. So it's, this is very cold. Um, this is a chamber full of super coolant. And that's, this is definitely the most expensive part of the, of the whole, you know, power generator apparatus thing. Um, it's important that it stays just the right temperature because you want it to condense the sour gas and the methane, but not freeze the methane. If you freeze the methane, then it gets, it just piles up down here and that's, you don't want that. Um, so in order to keep it the right temperature, there's a liquid tepidizer in here. And if it gets too cold, which it frequently does because uh, <laughs> the, uh, the aqua tuners are very powerful, um, then it turns on the tepidizer to warm it up a little bit. And that way you can maintain the right temperature. Um, so the methane gets pumped using this liquid pump through this pipe, or that pipe, into this chamber. Uh, this is, it's very cold at this point, of course, and so, uh, which is good because we can use that coldness to cool down the sour gas on this side, the sour gas that's coming down. So as the cold natural gas, oh, by the way, methane evaporates into natural gas in case that wasn't obvious. Um, it's just cold enough, barely cold enough to be methane, and the sour gas is definitely warm enough to, you know, warm it up and evaporate it into natural gas. So that's, uh, uh, it basically evaporates immediately when it comes out of the vent here. Um, so that as the cold natural gas rises, it warms up. It warms up by cooling down the sour gas on its way down the other side, and we end up with, um, way up here at the top it's absorbed most of that heat and it should be like 200 yeah 200 degrees celsius uh and we end up with this chamber full of natural gas and gas pumps uh, the gas pumps fill gas pipes which feed the natural gas generators um now i'm pretty sure like i said this whole thing is designed to convert an entire pipe of crude oil non-stop uh, so we're getting 10 kilograms of crude oil per second. I'm pretty sure that the yield from that is 6.66 kilograms of natural gas per second. So we'll get almost seven pipes full of natural gas uh, with this whole conversion. And I'll show you my, my gas pipes here real quick. It's a whole mess. Um, as you can see, there's a bunch of pumps and, you know, they're filling up gas pipes. And I won't go into too much detail about what all the mess is, um, but I think it's pretty clever. We'll talk about it later. And here's the uh, my natural gas pipes. One, two, three, four, five, six. A little less than six. They turn on and off a little bit, depending whether my, um, whether my, my reservoirs are full. Um, and those feed, ultimately feed these... Uh, natural gas generators. There's 11 on a row because one full pipe of natural gas will feed 11 natural gas generators. And there's seven rows, so there's 77 natural gas generators here. And we're making enough natural gas to feed 73.3 of them. Uh, if you do the math and you subtract the amount of power you're using for aqua tuners and such, um, then you end up generating about 50,000 watts continuously. Let's see, what else should, what else should I say before we go to sand sandbox mode? I can't think of anything. All right, well, I'm going to pause this and um, we'll go into sandbox mode and build this whole thing uh, so you can see all of the details. All right, here we are back. Um, this is sandbox mode. 
I've set up a giant, <laughs> this is just a giant room full of oil for the sake of our experiment. I'm pretty sure I have a screenshot ready here. Here we go, so that we can have our reference. <laughs> Let's see, so the first thing that we need is a little room for our liquid tepidizer. Oops. Um, for, oh, I, I see I have this set to insulation. Let's use something more realistic, like Mafic Rock is a really good, a pretty good insulator. Um, put water in here, and a liquid tepidizer, and we'll run our pipe. Uh, we want a radiant pipe. I'm pretty sure I used thermium for this, so that's probably not necessary. And now the way we turn off the um, the way we turn off the entire machine is by just shutting off the oil supply. So, oh geez, what's what's this made out of? Thermium. Okay, good. Unfortunately, the stuff that's in the heat exchanger needs to be able to withstand high temperature. So even like my liquid shut off needs to be made out of thermium. I know that's expensive, but this is supposed to be for advanced bases. So get it together. <laughs> um, all right, airflow tiles. So that'll fall onto an airflow tile. And then the oil that falls onto that airflow tile will run off each side onto those airflow tiles. And the oil that falls on those airflow tiles will run off each side onto these airflow tiles. And that should give you uh, give you the idea. It's not that complicated. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 layers of that. Um, so there's 4, 5, 6, 7, Oops. I know you need 14. Um, you can't really do it with less because I guess that's just how long it takes to exchange heat. And that heat exchange, I will help it along using um, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We'll help the heat exchange along using uh, temp shift plates. And the way you position those is pretty important. So, let's see, put them in the bottom row. Uh, the temp shift plates, I used diamond. Diamond is very nice for temp shift plates, and you, I mean, thermium is better, I suppose, for this purpose, but that would be a lot of thermium. It's kind of ridiculous. You probably don't want to do that. So if you put them in a row, here's the idea. Like down at the bottom, you know, let's build the wall on this next. Um, down at the bottom, you want everything to be hot. And if you, as you move up, you want it to cool off. So you don't want to put temp shift plates close enough to each other that they can transmit heat between each other because that would transmit heat vertically through the heat exchanger. And you don't want that to happen. You want the bottom to stay hot and the top to stay cool. And you want heat to be, to move, you know, around like horizontally is good because that's not up and down. Uh, uh, and you want heat to move between all of the elements, you know, near each other in an efficient way. And the temp shift plates help with that quite a lot. Um, in case you're not familiar with them, they have a range of one. So like there's a temp shift plate here, so it can transmit, it will pick up heat from like these three tiles above and these three tiles below. And I presume like the airflow tiles well, uh, but I'm not exactly sure if that works. I don't know. Um, and that helps a lot because, you know, like if there's oil sitting on the top of this airflow tile, then it can, it can, uh, the temp shift plate will facilitate faster heat transfer between that and say these guys down, these tiles down here and this tile over here and this one here. And, uh, and you get uh, that heat transfer gets accelerated quite a lot. Um, 
I'm gonna put in the the walls. Let's see, we need this one. I mean, just enough room down here for the uh, liquid aqua tuners, thermal aqua tuners, whatever they are. And we'll put in some more temp shift plates. Every two, you don't want them this close to each other. Like if I put a temp shift plate right here, oops, if I put one right there, they have a range of one. So this temp shift plate can reach this tile and that temp shift plate can reach that tile. And if that happens and you end up drawing heat from the bottom to the top to up here very efficiently, and that's not what we want for a heat exchanger. So I don't put them in that row. Uh, the way I have them set up, I'm not sure. Now, it seems like I could put a row of them here, but I didn't do that in mine. I wonder if there's a reason for that. I don't know. Put a row there. 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 Um, probably put... What did I do in mine? I put one in the middle. All right, well, let's just do that one right there. So those are our temp shift plates to facilitate heat transfer. And down at the bottom, of course, we need aqua tuners. Uh, these got to be made out of thermium, unfortunately, because, I mean, obviously they have to get hot enough, right? And we have some automation to go with those guys. We don't want them to get too hot, so we need to turn them off if it gets too hot down there. So there's a, a thing for that. And a hydro sensor. The hydro sensor will... That's not for the aqua tuners. The hydro sensor, if there's oil down here or petroleum, then it needs to turn off the input so that it doesn't just fill this up. <laughs> uh, and the only time that really matters is when the whole uh, the, the generator is getting started. Uh, if it's been running, then this will just stay hot and there will probably never be any liquid down here. Um, so. Let's see, automation, let's hook those up. These guys need to get turned off if this gets over, I think I set it, let me see, over 650, I'm pretty sure, is where I set it. I mean, it only has to go to five, I think it's 540 to make sour gas, uh, but, you know, margins. Um, we also need an automation wire. Uh, let's put, uh, I usually make this stuff out of steel, but it's probably not necessary. Let's not do it go that way. Let's go this way. To go up to the uh, the shutoff so that we can shut it off if there's liquid down there. Um, there's another thing that will turn it off. So I need an OR gate. We'll talk about what that other, <laughs> that other thing is later. So if that one's on and it turns off, we need a NOT gate to make it turn off or if some other one is on it, turns it off. Basically, if we have enough natural gas, uh, then we don't want this to just keep running. So we'll make that turn, shut it off as well. All right, I think that's the basics of it for the heat exchanger. What else? Um, all right, access for your dupes. You know what, that's important. Um, the way I kind of recommend doing this is put a hole in the wall like that, put it in an airlock, and then you know your dupes can approach over here. And uh, the, the way, reason I like doing it this way is that your dupes, if they need to get in there, which they shouldn't very often, so like, I'm not gonna go crazy on making a big fancy airlock for it or anything like that, but you can destroy these two tiles and the door will get hot and make things hot out here and you'll go through it and some of the gas will escape, but you know, for the way I play the game, that's not a big deal. Um, and they'll have access, and then when they're done, they can come out, and you can just build the uh, the insulated tiles again, and uh, and that's it. Access for dupes, and in my you'll see in my game, I made the access doors up at the top. Honestly, that didn't work very well, and it, <laughs> I ran into some problems because of that. So I don't really I think if you can avoid that, that's probably a good way to go. Um, Let's see. So that should give your, your dupes access to both all of this stuff. Let's see. What do we need up here? I guess we need a few airflow tiles for the 
Oh, you know what? I have a little ledge like this. I'm going to do it this way. If you can build a little ledge in here, then basically you're keeping the um, sour gas in the heat exchanger for as long as possible and then letting it out. And I think mine isn't as pronounced as that, but it has to do with my awful access tiles at the top. So I think this is probably the best way to do it, just something like that. Um, all right, for the... One of the things, one of the problems you'll have is uh, gases will get in here sometimes, you know, dupes go in and out, they'll let some gases in. Right now there are other gases in here that we don't like. And um, those will always, even if it's carbon dioxide, like very heavy stuff, it always finds its way up to the top, which is a little unexpected. Um, but for some reason, the movement of the liquid down over these tiles, like, pumps the gases upward. And I haven't really played around with that very much, but it's definitely a real phenomenon that happens. So the liquids go down, the gases go up. Even heavy ones like carbon dioxide will find their way out one way or another. Either it'll go over the ledge, into the other, the, the cold heat exchange, <laughs> the cold exchanger, or uh, find its way up to the top here one way or another. And the way I like to do uh, so up here at the top, I put in a gas pump, and its only job is to scrub out gases that I don't want in there. And my way of doing that is I'll put a couple of gas element sensors underneath a gas pump. And whenever those element sensors, let me see, how did I do it? If they aren't both um, sour gas, then the pump turns on, something like that. I'm pretty sure that's it. Figure out the automation for that. All right, so if this and this, <laughs> let's see if I get this right. All right, if this and this, not that. So if this is sour gas and this is sour gas, and this is on. Um, this is a not gate, so this the, will turn the gas pump off. I'm pretty sure that's right. Set those up. Sour gas. Sour gas, sour gas. Good enough. So that'll scrub out any of the extra, any other gases that you don't want in there. Um, let me see. So access for dupes to reach that, that could be tricky. Hmm. Probably put it in on this side. I mean, that's not something I really thought through because, like I said, mine didn't work that way. All right, let's have a look at that screenshot. So, ah, uh, crap. I don't have I don't have the other thing in my screenshot. That was foolish of me. Well, I might have to pause this and go back and have a look at it. But so, um, the sour gas will come up over this wall and start going down this tower, and I have some I'll just start putting them in here I used thermium tiles I don't know if thermium is necessary but it's what I used oh and you can't put them that close together your thermium tiles have to go two spaces apart and the reason is because you're going to use um, temp shift plates next to them and what that'll do, like all the all the gases that are near the temp shift plate, the temp shift plate will be able to transmit the heat from all this this sour gas and all of these tiles into that metal tile. And then on the other side, this temp shift plate will be able to take the heat from that metal tile and transmit it into all of these tiles near it. So it turns out to be a pretty good way to transmit the heat from gases through a wall like that. Um, but if they're closer together, then we have the same problem as we did in this heat exchanger, right? We don't want the heat from, uh, from this metal tile to go through this temp shift plate and reach this temp shift plate and go into there because it ruins our, uh, the gradient of the heat exchanger. We want it to be hot on the top and cold on the bottom, and we don't want to be transmitting the, that heat vertically through the heat exchanger. We want it to get cold as, as gases move through this. So they need to be, have two spaces between them so they don't reach each other, right? All right, let's see. I'll have to pause this in a second, go get another screenshot for this part of my, this part of the thing. Um, so this part, this 
I call it the cooling tower because the sour gas cools as it goes down. Um, it needs to be a little longer than the heating tower where the sour gas is heated. Um, if you make it the same height, then it's convenient because the aqua tuners are closer to the, the thing that cools, uh, you know, the little, little uh, chamber that cools the sour gas, but um, it doesn't work very well. It just needs more time. The heat exchanger is just not as efficient. It needs more time to cool down that sour gas as it goes towards the bottom. The gradient isn't as good, I guess, is, is one, way to, one way to say that. So, of course, the taller you make these, the more efficient they become, by the way. If you want to do more than 14, <laughs> uh, 14 levels of airflow tiles, um, then the sour gas at the top would be colder. Mine, I think, is about 200 degrees. And uh, basically, you'd be spending less power on these aqua tuners. They wouldn't have to turn on as often in order to keep the thing hot. Um, I'll go a little farther. This one will be an especially efficient one. All right, so I'm going to pause this, I guess, and go and get a screenshot so that I can do this properly on the first try. Pause. Pause. OK, I've got my screenshots now. That was quick, right? Uh, let's have a look at those. This one. Um, great. Well, that was easy. Sandbox. Get myself some thermium. I'm going to put these tiles in. And down here at the bottom, actually, that's where I needed to see the screenshot for. We got. Oh, I didn't get that one. Well, I guess we can make it up as we go along. So we'll want a right here. Make that the bottom. Um, we can put another thermium metal tile there with a temp shift plates on each side. And we need enough space the bottom here for the pump. I'm pretty sure I have one more, so right about there. One, two, three, four. Uh, I did one. I did five. Let's do it that way. All right. So. Sour gas goes in the top through these airflow tiles. By the way, the reason there are airflow tiles here is because the oil and stuff tends to fly around a little bit up here and splatter and drip and everything. And if you don't have airflow tiles right here, then it'll go over this edge. It'll, it'll sit up here on this little ledge. And of course, that takes up a tile and makes everything slow and it sucks. And it's better if there's an airflow tile there so that it just falls down where and goes where it's supposed to. Uh, I'll put these temperature of plates in, like I'm supposed to have. Whoops. Whoops, darn it. Oh, wow. Destroy, destroy. There and there and there and there. I should talk about dupe access to this area also. Because, obviously, your dupes have to build this. Um, I would put, uh, you know, something like an access point over here. Oops, destroy. Put in a airlock, just like I did that other one earlier. Um, uh, no fancy airlock, just you know, a, a door behind some insulation, so you can uh, deconstruct the insulation, and get in there. Um, but of course, over here you'll need a ladder. No sweat, one ladder. And that'll have to go up here to the top. And I think, I wonder if they can get up. I wonder if they can reach all that from that ladder. Probably not. Just put it in there. Big deal. That'll be good enough. And they should be able to reach all this stuff up here as well. Um, that'll let them build these tiles. On this side, we'll need a ladder here so that they can reach all the other stuff. And another 
place to access it. So same kind of thing. I mean, seriously, you guys will be doing this. I mean, this will be probably all a little bit different in your base anyways, right? But that's the way I like to access stuff. Uh, so down here at the bottom, this is where we have the super coolant and above that metal tiles. Um, you'll definitely need a thermo sensor in there so that you, because you don't want the super coolant to get too cold and a uh, tepidizer because you don't want it to get too cold. <laughs> I can't remember exactly what temperature that's supposed to be. I have to look at what is the temperature of methane. Methane. Uh, so it turns into, it turns solid at 182. So let's set this to negative 183. I want to activate this if it gets below negative 183. Now I know 183 is, is lower than negative 182, um, but the actual phase change doesn't happen until it's three degrees less than the temperature <laughs> that it says. Yeah, any, 183 is good. I think that's the, probably the one I used in, in mine. Oh, I don't know, I already did that. Um, there's one more space over here in, in mine that I used that to pump in the super coolant, right? I put a vent here and I use that to fill this with the super coolant and you don't have to do it that way. And also it kind of sucks because that's like super coolant's expensive and that just, that's another tile you have to fill up with super coolant. So you might be better off being smarter about it than me. Get the super, super coolant in there some other way. So you don't have to fill up, use so much of it. Um, since this is the sandbox mode, I can do this neat trick. Just fill that up. Ah, full of super coolant. It's beautiful. How much is in there? Eight, 800 kilograms per tile. Yeah, that's, that's good. Uh, yeah, so this is these, this, this super coolant and these uh, metal tiles. Those are the things that get really cold to condense the sour gas into methane. Um, above that, I'm going to destroy that. Uh, you can use temp shift plates. In fact, I think you have to or else it won't work very well. Um, and that will transmit the cold in these metal tiles all the way up to these tiles. That way sour gas is going to be rushing in there and then condensing into methane you'll have really most of the time this will all be a vacuum and so you know you got a vacuum in that sour gas in order to turn it into methane quickly um and so that's why that's set up the way it is liquid pump um this doesn't have to be fancy or anything like you don't have to make it out of thermium or anything uh apparently i am but i mean it doesn't matter uh and i would use an insulated pipe make igneous rock is good for insulated pipes unless you want to go like insulation insulated pipes but i don't think that's necessary um, and that'll pump the methane over into this chamber yeah um what else am i missing oh yeah that's right this there's an opportunity here like sour gas comes down into this area and up here it's pretty high pressure i mean you can imagine all that oil you're changing into sour gas. This is like, I mean, up here at the top, I've seen it get up to 300 kilograms per tile or something, which is nuts. Um, uh, but down here, it's like a vacuum. And so you have an, if you pump, like you'll have sour gas other places in your base probably, and you'll be looking for a way to dispose of it. You can just pump it right into this by putting a, uh, a gas vent right here. It'll be low pressure enough that it will be able to get in there at that point because it's near where it's being condensed. So, I mean, I'm not gonna use it or anything like that, but for example, sour gas input right there, and that'll work out. Uh, you might wanna do, now that I think about it, you probably wanna do, uh, <laughs> you'll probably wanna make this, oh boy, I'm really all thumbs. Um, you probably wanna make this a uh, insulated, pipe, gas pipe. What would you make that out of? I think mafic rock. Yeah, we can use mafic rock for that. Um, and that, of course, is because this is going to be very cold and you don't want the sour gas. If it freezes in the pipe right there, it'll break the pipe and it's a big pain in the ass. So make it, make it insulated. 
All right, so our methane goes up into this. Um, it's close enough to this temp shift plate that it will evaporate it almost instantly. And we'll travel up this column all the way to, well, near the top. Giving up its coldness, absorbing the heat all the way until it gets to, I'm going to put another one of these in right here. Whoops. Right there. Uh, it gets up to the top here. Um, now you need to make space for your pumps. Unfortunately, these probably, you probably need to make these out of thermium. Maybe you can get away with steel. What is that plus those? 275? You might be able to get away with steel for these pumps, but I mean, it's going to be pretty hot up here. I think uh, you should probably make them out of thermium. I made mine out of thermium. I think you're probably better off if you do that as well. Um, two, three, four, five, six. I made this a little too tall. Seven. So you'll need seven output pipes, which means you need um, 14 gas pumps. And that's a lot. But, I mean, the only way you can burn natural gas is if you put it in a pipe so that you can feed it to a natural gas generator. So that's what all, that's why there's so many of these. Absolutely necessary. I'm going to try to remember here. That might be, we might be able to just close that off. I don't think we need any fancy other equipment in there to make that work. So, oh, I know. We are going to need a space thing right up there in the corner. Uh, and that is for a Atmos sensor. Basically, when you have enough, enough natural gas, uh, you want to turn off the oil. Otherwise, this will just keep running and you'll get like, you know, <laughs> uh, hundreds of kilograms per tile worth of natural gas. I mean, unless you're burning it constantly, it's it'll just build up in here. So you need some way to turn off the oil input when you have enough natural gas. Unfortunately, these only go up to 20 kilograms. So once, if it's below 20 kilograms, then this should be, wait, no, if it's above 20 kilograms, and we want to turn this off. Uh, wait a minute, I'm not sure I did the automation right for this. All right, so if this is, <laughs> if this detects anything, if it's above zero, then this turns on. So, yeah, I blew this. I did this wrong. Gotta, gotta fix my, my automation. This should be an AND gate. Uh, automation. So if this one is on, meaning it's below one, then let oil in. And if this one is on, oops, meaning it's uh, below the maximum, then turn the oil on. Okay, that works. Um, I think I did this automation wrong too, now that I think about it. So this is yeah, this should be an OR gate. OR gate. So, if this is sour gas, or this is sour, I mean, if this is sour gas, that's right, or this is sour gas, then this turns on, it turns this off. So, only when both of these are not sour gas the, does the gas pump turn on and start pumping stuff out. I like to do it that way because, well, that's just the way I like to do it. Analyze, I'll leave, that, I'll leave the analysis of that up to the, uh, the, <laughs> the reader, the student. Oh, I know, you know what? We can't actually put, we need to put a ladder here for dupe access, otherwise they won't be able to reach anything. build all that stuff. 
which means we also need destroy. We also need access. Dupes. Dupes. All right. Now your dupes can get in there and work on all that. All right, so that's the basics of it. I haven't put any of the plumbing in yet. We can start doing that. So, I don't know if you know this. Use igneous rock. Um, but you can't freeze super coolant. Oh, man, this is a little weird. I put these guys in backwards. I can make it work. Um, you can't freeze super coolant. So you don't have to worry about it getting too cold out. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, yeah. You don't have to worry about it getting too cold. Just let it run through there. If it needs to heat this stuff up, just let it go. Um, it's kind of nice that way. Pretty sure I used thermium for this. Probably not necessary. In fact, I'm quite sure it's not necessary to use thermium, but I have a lot, so whatever. Um, that's that plumbing. I did that plumbing. I think that's all of the pipes you have to lay, but the 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 air pipes, the ventilation is a little trickier. We need to hmm. So to fill one pipe full all the way, you need two pumps, and you need to set them up so that they combine in a you know in a way that prevents them from uh, I, I call it thrashing right where anyway my strategy for doing that is this you probably have your own your own method um, but so basically both these pumps will go the natural gas will the bubble in this pipe and this pipe will combine into one big bubble here and then go to this bridge to get out and that seems to be like a pretty reliable way to do it oops And that'll give us seven pipes exiting. I guess we'll go that far. Um, at this point, the natural gas is probably pretty hot. Keep that in mind. All right, let's see. What are we missing? All right, this is... Anything that gets down here will be frozen pretty much as far as gases that you don't want, like chlorine and carbon dioxide, it'll turn into a block. And you can always send a dupe in there to pick it up, right? Uh, you know, I don't know why I destroyed that ladder. I didn't have to. That's nice. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, now, what to do with... Like after, it's, it gets a little tricky what to do with these pipes after they leave. I have a reservoir set up for each one so that the pumps only turn on when the reservoir is not full. Um, and that way, I, it, you don't have to wait for the, um, like if, if you need natural gas at your, uh, at your natural gas generators, it's available immediately because the reservoir keeps the pipe full, right? And hmm, now that I think about it, that might be completely unnecessary. I mean, why not just let the pump fill up the pipe until the pipe is full? And if the pipe is not full, then they just they start going again because they'll stop when they get blocked. I mean, let's try that. I don't know. Maybe I'm making a mistake. I mean, I'm sure I had a good reason to do it the way I did it in the first place. Um, yeah, I'm going to destroy these. It's probably important to use insulated pipes for this because the, the natural gas will be pretty hot, most of it, and uh, you won't, you don't want all that heat getting into your base, probably. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why you'd want to cool it off. It's just, you know, more work. Um, my room full of, I have my room full of, uh, of generators insulated uh, because of the way that I do cooling. 
let's see, so they're three high. One, two, three. And I'll probably put mesh tiles in. Power, natural gas generator. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I need more. I think we're mostly done. I'm not going to do the entire giant natural gas room natural gas generator room because this isn't really about that. I just want to demonstrate oh, let's see. so I would do something like this. I get the right number one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven oh I went too far. You only need eleven. You can't you can't fuel more than eleven with one pipe full of natural gas so so there's that. Um, obviously, I mean, you'll have a whole bunch more natural gas generators down here. I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to fill it all out. Let's just pretend like this is a big room full of all your natural gas generators and it's the right size and all of those things. And I'm going to promptly ignore it. So I think we're about ready to start turning stuff on. I've got to put power to all these things. By the way, I built the thing up here just for generating power to get this started. Um, so let's let's connect that up and get it rolling and see what things I forgot. So this needs to be there, I'm warming that up. These, I'm going to need a couple of, yeah, these going down here to power the uh, aqua tuners. Uh, let's do this. Mm, yeah, that's fine. Um, and the pumps and that thing what else do we need oh these guys of course 960 we all of these on one what do we got we have another one up here let's take that one i've i've used this sandbox before which is why these uh all this power is set up the way it is all right, so we need to power our. Okay, you know what? We need to power all of our uh, gas pumps, but I'm only using, you know, for this demo, I'm only using these top two, so let's just do that. And I think that's everything, except, of course, the power generators. But. Um, oh, I know, I'm going to need. I'll put in some vents for the carbon dioxide they produce. Oops. Um, but I'm not going to actually deal with that in a reasonable way. You probably, I mean, you have an advanced base. You probably already have a bunch of slicksters or something for eating your carbon dioxide or whatever it is you do with your carbon dioxide. And I will let you, let you deal with that. Let's see what else. Uh, let's put, put a cable on here so that it, these will work. I don't know if you actually need to connect a cable to those in order to make generators work, but there they go. Right, let's see this work. Um, our oil is coming. And these... Dismiss. Oh, I remember. So, there's something I made a mistake with. <laughs> in my setup... Actually, we should just go ahead and do this. So you're going to need some kind of filter to prevent things that are not natural gas from getting to your natural gas generators. And I have a way that I like to do filters. Um, okay, you guys are advanced players. You should be able to handle that on your own. I'm going to not f stress out about making a really elegant solution because that's not really what this, this, is a, this tutorial is about. I'll just stick a, uh, a really... Where, I, I never use these things. I can't remember how they go. Um, I'll just stick a really mundane, unsophisticated, power-hungry, evil filter on here and ignore the details. Um, and that's going to need power. And that'll work. Oh, and i got to tell it to filter natural gas. 
Okay. All right, then. That should do that job. Uh, what's wrong with this? Okay, right, our vent needs to be vented. Mm-hmm. That's good. And our oil is coming in. It's Our water isn't that hot yet, but it should be all right. These guys should be running, right? Disabled by automation. Oh, the pipe is empty. I've got to put super coolant into the coolant pipe. So let's just do that. Mm, put it down here. And I didn't, I didn't set up a thing for this yet, but I can do that real quick. Yeah, there we go. Super coolant, super coolant, pump, pipe, power. I think I can, yeah, I'm just going to tap into that one. All right. So now our super coolant is going. Everything is running. Our oil should be turned off. Uh-oh, something didn't go right. Okay, it's off. The reason it's off is because we have oil down here in the bottom and this hydro sensor told it to turn off, which it should turn off until this oil is evaporated uh, because we want to get this started without just filling this up down here. What's happened? Okay, so this is going in. What's wrong with our aqua tuner? Disabled by automation grid above, below. All right, it's rolling. Our aqua tuners will heat up the oil. I'm gonna speed this up. It's got to get to 540 degrees. 12, 13, <laughs> 150. <laughs> it's gonna take a minute. Yeah. Our super coolant is full. I'm just gonna take that out so it doesn't get complicated. The, uh, this super coolant. All right, negative 70. Negative, oh, that's interesting, why is that? Oh, right, so the cool super coolant down here in this chamber has also got to cool way, way down to like negative 180. I think I'm going to just hurry that up using the magic of the sandbox. Uh, what does that got to be? Let's go 100. Is that now? Okay, that's close enough. Ooh, wow, you see all that freeze? Was that carbon dioxide? Hmm. Normally I'd send my dupes in there to pick that stuff up because it bothers me. <laughs> but we'll leave it there for now. Oh, we've got petroleum. Oh, we're cruising. We have sour, oh, we've got some sour gas already. Once, once this evaporates into sour gas down here, then our oil will turn back on. Almost there. Our oil is turned back on. We don't have a lot of heat sort of built up in here yet, so this will fill back up. We'll turn the oil back off, but we are uh, we're starting to roll, right? Mm-hmm. Great. This is getting quite thin, pumping stuff out. It's getting quite thin, pumping stuff out. It's got a little bit of natural gas somehow. Where did that come from? Uh, it's just ambient, hanging out natural gas. This is... Starting to warm up a little better. Um, so one of the things that'll happen is you'll get a lot of sour gas and natural gas in this pump. Um, my in mine I just I filter that and I send the sour gas down here because that's where I want it. And I send the natural gas. 
what do I do that would do with a natural gas? Oh yeah, that's right. I have a fancy bypass so that my so that natural gas that I pump in from elsewhere in my base and from my moo farm and stuff like that uh, goes takes priority into this pipe. I basically pump it into this pipe uh, so that it gets burnt by my generators first. Uh, and the reason it'd be nice if you could just pump it into here, but um, the pressure is usually too high, so it causes trouble. How are we doing? It's rolling. Temperature down here is 500. At this point in the video, you can see that something has gone wrong that I wasn't expecting. Uh, the sour gas down here isn't rising through the heat exchanger. Um, the reason for this, it's not entirely obvious what the reason is, but you, you can see, uh, like, you have the airflow tiles, and even though you can't really see it, there's a little oil on top of the airflow tiles, and that's preventing the sour gas from moving upward through them. And apparently, I don't know, it seems like it could go through the bottom of the airflow tile and then to the right, but it doesn't work that way. Anyway, the point is, the stuff is stuck, the sour gas is stuck down here and it's not rising. Um, I'm a little disappointed in that because I didn't think this would need any special attention in order to get started, uh, but it does. 120 kilograms of sour gas. It's, the pressure is definitely built. 200 kilograms of sour gas. Why would the pressure be building that much, but it's not moving upwards? I do not know. It seems like it would just rise to the airflow tile. There's almost nothing here. Oh, but there's oil there. Over there. Oh, well, that's what's wrong. It is kind of stuck behind this stuff. Maybe you should take out a block while it's getting started. I think this will work anyways if we just wait. It's just frustrating. I don't want to wait. You can send some dupes in to take out a couple of these blocks to get it started, I guess. That's not crazy, so... One there, one there, there. And now the sour gas is a way to go. It's rising up. Things are working correctly. And we flushed out most of the stuff. Put our air flow tiles back. There you go. Deadlock resolved. And wow, is it ever working? <laughs> oh, I'm missing one. Air flow tile. Bam. All right, we are now continuously converting oil into sour gas. So our sour gas is risen all the way up. It's going over the wall and down this side towards our condenser. And what will happen, I think, is it's going to be kind of it's going to be kind of warm at first and the reason is because I mean it's going to have we're going to have a hard time condensing it at first and it's because uh, there's no cold natural gas going up this side to cool it off and so we are getting some some methane down here condensing see it does look, kind of look like it's evaporating right away which makes sense if the sour gas that's coming down is is too warm because it hasn't been cooled off Oh, we're getting a little little methane through the through the pipe. Check it out. There it goes. Just a little bit. Starting to work. Starting to work. But that means because this is cold, it means it's cooling down the sour gas. Starting to get some uh, some actual natural gas up here, making some power. I think that's basically it. In case you didn't know, when you condense sour gas into methane, it also produces sulfur. But there's nothing in the game that you can do with sulfur. It's basically just a waste product. And so I just let it, and there's no reason not to let, just let it pile up down here. And that's what I do. I just let it pile up down there. Because who cares? 
Obviously you'll want to put in some automation that turns off your natural gas generators when they're making more power than you need, like stick a battery up here, you know. Um, I'm not going to do that. Like power management. Oh, by the way, <laughs> um, how do you plug in 70-ish natural gas generators to your power grid and make that work in a way that's not completely insane? I think that's a whole other video, unfortunately, and I don't want to get into it right now. Maybe the next Maybe the next video we can deal with power management for extremely large bases that take lots and lots of power. It's actually not as hard as it seems, um, but it's pretty hard to figure out, uh, you know, when you realize you need to do it and you're trying to figure out how to do it. So this will keep going until our natural gas chamber here is so full that the Atmos sensor tells the oil to turn off. This is getting to be more serious business. We're up to, what is that, one and a half, one and a half kilograms per second-ish? Oh yeah, another thing you want to know. Um, so, in your base you'll have three uh, oil wells, right? I'm going to close this just so that we can look at the wonder of the polluted water that all that produces. You'll have three oil wells, and you have to pump water into the oil wells in order to get the oil. Three oil wells will produce one full pipe of oil, which is what you want, um, and you need three kilograms of water in order to, to pump in per second in order to get that full pipe of oil. Um, luckily, the natural gas generators will make more water, polluted water, than you use in water. So I think when, when you have the entire thing, like all 70-ish generators running, you produce about five kilograms per second of polluted water. And, oh man, overheating. What am I gonna do? Oxygen. Let's put that at, what is that? Uh, three, uh, let's just fill it up. Put 10 kilograms in there, because I'm, I'm crazy. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, that's right. So you, you'll produce about five kilograms per second of polluted water and you only use three kilograms per second of clean water to get your oil. Um, this is an advanced thing, so I know you guys all know how to turn polluted water into regular water. Uh, the point is you end up with a surplus of water by doing this. So um, on the balance, the economy of this is that it produces more water I mean, you you end up with a, you know, what was it, 50,000 watts of power plus some extra water and carbon dioxide when, you know, after it's all run through. Um, so it's just, uh, it, if you look at it in terms of a closed loop, it's just good things. You're not using anything up. Yeah, this is, this is going pretty strong now. This pipe is we've got almost all, all the natural gas generators rolling. Um, the pipe looks like it's about full. Yep, the pipe is full of natural gas now. That's it. Uh, what else What else do I need to say? I don't know. I'm sure there will be lots of questions and imp improvement suggestions, which I'd like to hear because this is something like this whole fluid to gas heat exchanger thing is something that took me a while to figure out and uh, I, I bet I'd like to hear some suggestions for how to make it better. Like I know you could make it more efficient just by making it taller. Like maybe you could make it so that you use only one thermo aqua tuner if you make this very tall because that will make the gradient more gradual and the heat exchanger will become more efficient. Uh, but. I mean that's it would be it's already pretty big. It'd be huge, right? So I didn't I didn't try that. Um, one limitation that I can think of that might happen is one aqua tuner might not be able to generate enough coldness for you know to keep this super cool and cold enough to for the, uh, uh, the to condense the methane here. Um, but of course that could be overcome by making this part taller. Um, you know, because then its heat exchange would be more efficient and it wouldn't have to do as much cooling either. So, okay, well, I decided that it was important to show what happens when 
you know, when it gets full, when everything gets backed up, that it turns itself off in a, an elegant way. Like, this thing isn't even up to speed yet. Like, if these, this would be nearly a full pipe if this were going full speed. Uh, but what's, what's going on right now is the pressure is increasing for the amount of sour gas that's in here. It's up to, let me see, up here it's, this is where it's usually highest pressure, so that's why I'm looking there. It's up to almost 100 kilograms per tile. And as that increases, then it'll make the, the sour gas move faster down this, um, down this tower, the cooling tower. And, uh, and more of it will condense and more of it will go through the pipe and it'll fill this up faster. Um, when this gets up to, well over here anyway, when this gets up to 20 kilograms per tile, then the Atmo sensor will turn off the oil. Okay, I skipped ahead a bit here. Uh, so you wouldn't have to just sit here and watch this fill full of natural gas. Um, it's up to 24 kilograms per tile now. It actually didn't take nearly as long as I thought it would. Um, so the Atmos sensor, you know, it's over 20 kilograms. And so it turned off, using the automation, it turned off uh, the oil input. The oil is no longer flowing down. These, these aqua tuners will keep running until it gets... Uh, well, I set this to 650 degrees, so it'll keep going until it gets to 650 degrees, and it'll be nice and hot and ready for, you know, whenever the oil starts back up again. Uh, and I think that we've really reached a good place to, to stop now. That's basically everything you need to know. Um, perhaps, uh, oh, I, or perhaps you'd like to know more about the cooling, I suppose. But that's... Yeah, no, this is for advanced bases, and you probably have got cooling figured out, you know, how you like to do it yourself. But clearly, you're going to need to cool your, uh, you know, natural gas generators, because they generate a fair bit of heat. Um, I think that would be another good video, actually, how to do cooling in a gigantic base so that everything stays cool and not too cool. Uh, but for now, I think that's, I think that's about it for this. Uh, this demo of this power generator thing. So, the end. No credits.